Hey guys, this is C-Rock. So today I am putting out something new that I am going to try and start doing once a month now. Um, I'm just going to talk about something in history, past, present, or predicted future that I read or watch in a movie or a show, okay? Uh, let's, let's start off this second week. I know I'm a little late with this first one here of September. I'm off with my review of the book of... The Revolution's Last Men, The Soldiers Behind the Photographs by Don N. Haggist. This book, this is a book about, well, like the title says, The Last Men of the American Revolution. It contains pictures, yes, we do have photos of veterans from this war, which is shocking, I think, since it was so long ago, or we feel like it's so long ago, some of the time. These pictures were taken in 1864 and since the first camera was invented in 1816 and the first photograph was taken by Joseph Nikemfor Nipisi. Yeah, that's a French name and I gave my best shot at it. Sorry. <laughs> in 1826, he took the first photograph or in 1827. They're kind of a little unsure, I guess, on that time. So I'm going to go ahead and read the back of the uh, a book here to go ahead and give you guys an idea of what it, it's about. As the American Civil War threatened to tear the United States apart, came the realization that only a handful of veterans of the American Revolution, all centurions, meaning they were over 100 years old, still survived when who had fought the war that created the nation four score and seven years ago, six of these men were photographed and interviewed for a book that appeared late in 1864 their images have captured generations since then but through a combination of faded memories and the interviews patriotic agenda the biographies accompanying these amazing photographs were grambled and distorted containing information that ranged from inaccurate to implausible now, for the first time, the military careers of these men have been researched in detail using a wide range of primary sources. The result is a new perspective on the actual service of these soldiers, from enlistment to discharge, along with, along with new details of their post-war lives. The Revolution's last men, the soldiers behind the photographs, presents the original bibli biographical interviews published in 1864 pension depositions and the other first hand accounts given by each man later in life and an up-to-date bibliography examining each soldier's service and discussing the inaccuracies and uncertainties of the previously published accounts to complete complement the photographs taken in 1864 Original drawings depict the men as they may have appeared when they were soldiers in 17 during the revolution using current research on military artifacts and material culture also included are tr additional photographs of some of the men that were not part of the 1864 collection but taken when their status as the last known survivors of the American Revolution made them celebrities. While the photographs of these aged veterans continue to capture Im imaginations, this book puts their service into perspective and allows these men to be appreciated for who they really were, the first and many greatest generations. So, all of the men in these pictures are at least 101 years old, which was a very long time to live back then, and even now. I mean, I think one of the oldest people alive today is 120 or something like that. Um, but still capable of happening. It's still capable of happening back then, and it is today. The six men who are depicted in these photos are Samuel Downing, 1761 is when he was born, and he died in 1867, and he lived to be 106. And he was part of the 2nd New Hampshire Regiment. The next picture here is Daniel Waldo. He lived from 1762 to 1864. He lived to be 102, and he was part of the Connecticut militia. And then the next picture here is Lemaire Cook. 
1759 is when he was born, and he died in 1866. He lived to be 107, and he was part of the Second Dragoons, who, and he may or may not have appeared in uh, Turn, Washington Spies, if any of you know that, that show, um, since the major of the Dragoons was Benjamin Talmadge, who plays a big part in that show and the plot of that show. It's a great show. If you're interested in it, you should go check it out sometime. It's mainly about the spies during the revolution, okay? Um, the next picture here is Alexander Millinier. 1760 to 1865 is when is the period of time that he lived in. Uh, he lived to be 105, of, and he was part of the 1st New York Regiment. And the next picture we have here is of William Hitchens. He lived from 1764 to 1866. He lived to be 102. And he was part of the Massachusetts militia. Um, the next picture we have here is of Adam Link. He lived from 1761 to 1864. He lived to be 103, and he was part of the Pennsylvania militia. Now, all these men are the last men that were on the pension roll for the American Revolution, okay? There are other men like Daniel Frederick Bakerman, who lived from 1759 to 1869. I know, that's a long time. He lived to be 110. And John Gary, who lived from 1764 to 1868, who lived to be 104, who are the last surviving veterans, but were not on the pension roll for the American Revolution. I guess they didn't qualify for pensions or anything back then. This book does mention them, along with William Pringen, I think is how you say that, who lived in Baldwin County, North Carolina, who was born in 1732, okay, and died in 1855, supposedly putting him at 123, I guess, when he died. A source for that is down below in the description of this video. If you can find a separate source that is more reasonable for that age, because 123 is pretty old, um, let me know, because I'd like to look at it. Uh, but William is claimed to be the oldest veteran from the war. Uh, so he served in the war, and he was the oldest one. Well, Samuel Downing is the last one who, from the pension roll to have died. Okay? Uh, this is all discussed in the epilogue of this book, where it also goes into the veterans who served in the British side that were um, from the British Army and also ones that were Tories who were in America and served from the Canadian side and who went and lived in Canada too afterwards. If you wish to purchase this book, then you can find it pretty easily. Uh, you know, just go ahead and Google it find a bunch of different copies of it. Um, it will cost probably usually from 12 to $15, and it is an easy read, uh, very short, only about 186, 88 pages, which is nice for me since I am a slow reader and I'm also dyslexic, if you couldn't tell from me reading that last past there. Well, that's all for today, guys. Um, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time, all right? If you want to give me some ideas for future stuff and to do videos like this on, please let me know, all right? Hit like and subscribe, all right? Bye-bye.